Hello there, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be using these fun products along with my Arteza Real Brush Markers because I want to make a background and then just do some watercoloring. So I'm starting off with some Arteza Expert Watercolor Paper and I have a stamp block and I'm just taking one of my Arteza Real Brush Markers and I'm putting it all over that stamp block, misting it with water, and then I'm going to stick it right down onto my paper. I wasn't sure how this was going to work exactly, but I thought, let's experiment, let's give it a try, let's find another way to possibly use our markers. And then I clean off my stamp block, and then I take a couple other colors. I'm sorry I didn't write down the colors, um, but I have the set of 48, so these are the ones that are in there. And I'm just stamping or coloring all over the top, adding some green and yellow because I wanted to have a good mix. I wasn't sure how this would mix. And then I spritzed that again with some water several times and then stamped that down onto that watercolor paper as well. And when I pick it up, it kind of gives a little, you know, it sticks to one side. I'm cleaning up my mess and kind of letting the water move around as it wants to and just cleaning up my mess a little bit more and then I'll grab out my heat tool to heat set my background. Right now, it doesn't look like much. Right now, I'm not that impressed with it even, but uh, as you start to add elements, it will look even better, so stick with it. And now I'm trimming it down. So I started out, this was a four and a quarter by five and a half inches, so I'm trimming it down just on the edges to make it four inches by five and a half. I just want there to be a small border when I do put this down on my card. Now I'm grabbing another piece of that Arteza Expert Watercolor Paper and this absolutely adorable stamp set from Lawn Fawn called Jump for Joy. Now I don't know when this came out, maybe last year, maybe the year before, I'm not 100% sure, but it's just such a cute image. And I know that, you know, everybody's coming out with all kinds of new images and things like that, but um, I was just excited about this one. I love it. It's just, just a fun little image, a bunch of them. So um, I'm sticking that in there and I'm using my embossing bag, my magic powder bag all over the paper. And I'm going to stamp this down with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink a couple times just to make sure that I have a good crisp image. And then I am going to stamp out my leaves about three times. So I have a small leaf and a, a big leaf. I wasn't sure how many leaves I wanted, so I just stamped it out about three times. And then I am going to end up covering this with embossing powder. This is the Raven embossing powder. Uh, you, this, you could completely skip this step. This is completely unnecessary when you're watercoloring, but sometimes I get a little bit lazy and I want to just color, you know, one image right next to the other. And when you're doing watercolor, sometimes that can be a little bit tricky and you can end up having colors bleed into each other since they're both wet. But when you have those little bit of raised lines when you do the embossing, then you can be a little bit lazy and you can, you can color images right next to each other without worrying about the bleed in. So now I'm just heating that until that's smooth and melted. And then I'll grab out my Arteza water brush, one of them. It comes in a set of six and I'm gonna grab some of the other colors. And I started out by uh, coloring right onto the watercolor paper, forgetting that it doesn't necessarily work that great like that on this kind of watercolor paper. But, so I scribble it right onto my glass mat, and I love doing it this way too. This is a fun way to do it. And I can just pick up the color with my water brush and then color down on the leaves where I want them. And I, yeah, I definitely enjoy doing it this way. Now, if I had had Bristol Smooth watercolor paper, I could have, um, I mean, I know a lot of people have a lot of great luck doing it that way, just coloring on it that way, but I kind of like doing it this way as well. And I had already stamped out the images, so I wasn't gonna stamp them out again. <laughs> so I'm putting all my colors onto my glass media mat, and then I'll pick up the colors that I want. And I'm not so worried about um, how flat the colors look at this point uh, because with watercolor you're definitely going to work in layers so I'm just putting down my flat wash right now and there's no rhyme or reason to what colors I'm putting where I'm just making sure that all those colors you know maybe different colors next to each other different colored leaves next to each other and then um, I will move on and, and do the yellow next and then if I find that I need a different color somewhere else, then I'll add that as well. I do decide that I want one extra orange leaf up there because I didn't have one. So because all those colors are down, I can do that very easily. And this is actually a very fast way to do the coloring is to put it onto your media mat or an acrylic block or a palette of some sort. Um, it's just a super easy way. Now the colors that I chose for my little hedgehog 
I'll get into those in a second, but I kind of let things dry just a second, and then I went back in with the second layer. And there's no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting my darker shade. I'm just sticking it down just to add some variation to those leaves to make them look a little bit more dimensional so that they're not just so flat. But yeah, it's fun. I enjoy, I enjoy coloring like this. Moving on to my hedgehog, they're just, I have three colors. One is more of a brownish color, one's more of a pinky flesh color, and then I do put down more of a blue violet. And that blue violet is going to be for the shading on my little hedgehog. So I'll use the darker brown all around his little quills, and then use the fleshy color, the fleshy pinky color, on the inside of him. And then I'll grab some of that purple, that blue violet, and just put that just in some of the spots where I find that there might be some shadowing and add a little bit darker to his quills and then we're going to be ready to start die cutting but you do want to make sure that your images are very very dry before you start die cutting so now I am placing all of my dies in their positions and I'm tacking that down with some washi tape any low tack tape would work but you want to do it on the outside of the image so that you don't have that that stick to the image and possibly tear it I ran that through my die cutting machine and now I have all of my little characters and, I, and pieces. So I'm gonna stick those down and kind of try to arrange how I want this to look before I move on to stamping my sentiment. So when I'm happy with that, I'll pull out, well, I guess I'm gonna pull out my uh, card base first, which is, uh, this is called Lunch Bag by Brutus Monroe. It was a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of cardstock that I scored at five and a half inches and then I'll pull out my sentiment. The one little frustrating thing for me about this sentiment is that I can't get the smaller sentiment closer to the big sentiment because of the bottom of the F. So it looks like they're quite a bit a ways away from each other. I was trying to manipulate and find a way to make it look like it, they could be right next to each other, but it just wouldn't work. I didn't want it sticking out too far to the left because then you might, and pardon my head, you might get a little bit confused as to how it's supposed to be written. But once I get it centered how I want it, I'll pull out my VersaFine Onyx Black ink one more time, and then I will stamp that down onto my card panel, stamping it a couple times. And then I will pull everything out and I'm gonna start assembling my card. I'm just using some liquid glue to assemble everything. I thought about popping it up on foam tape, but then I thought, no, I just want it to all be flat to the little background because I do plan to pop up the panel itself onto my card base. So once I get all of my little images all ready to go, and how cute is that hedgehog looking like he is jumping into that pile of leaves? Funny story, I don't know if you've ever actually jumped into a pile of leaves, but it doesn't work. <laughs> I tried it once as a kid, and oh my gosh, did I hurt my back so bad. <laughs> I had that leaf pile pretty high too, my friend and I from our neighborhood, and yeah, that's not fun. It does not work. <laughs> Uh, so the foam tape I used is the Brutus Monroe 16 inch white foam tape and I'm just peeling off the backing paper and then I'm going to adhere that down to my card base. And then when I have that adhered down, I'm going to grab out some Nouveau drops. These are metallic auburn pearl and then bottle green. They just matched so perfectly. I got these last year. They're just great fall colors. So I'll put a couple of the bottle green down and then a couple of the metallic auburn pearl three of those actually and then I will pull out um, just an embossing container embossing powder container and I'll smack those down to flatten that out just a little bit to make them look more like enamel dots and that'll finish off our card so if you liked this card please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so and as always guys thank you for all the love and the comments and the liking and subscribing and everything that you guys do I really really appreciate it and thank you so much for stopping by